it's been a while. Like, seriously, a, a while. And I'm sorry for that. And uh, I could list many explanations and apologies or reasons why. But we don't have time for any of that because I have a very special video planned for you guys today because I've hit two milestones since my last video, which is that this is going to be my, my actually my 100th video. And so that's pretty exciting. It's also my first video I'm putting out since I hit 200 subs. Um, so I'm a little bit, you know, late in putting it out, but uh, all the same, it's going to be a really awesome build. So let's just get right to it. What I'm going to be showing you guys how to make today is a uh, very powerful and dangerous PVC crossbow. Now it's going to be similar to this one, but much, you know, better. Now, if it's your first time here, I just want to say welcome. I'm uh, Ian, the Junk Juggernaut, aka the Junkernaut. And I ask you guys to hit that subscribe button down below. It's a big favor to me. I really appreciate it. And it lets me say, welcome to the family, yeah? And if you guys don't feel comfortable or interested in doing that right now, totally understand. It's no big deal. Just want you to keep in mind that I do make a lot of weapons like this bad boy right here. Uh, also, I own about 10 acres of land, uh, several shovels, and a wheelbarrow. So, you know, just random facts, whatever. First things first, I probably should do something about this. Voila, it is clean. Actually didn't organize most of it, I just put it into this wheelbarrow right here, so uh... It's crazy how fast that illusion of like being a good person can just be destroyed. My previous crossbow used a bow uh, that was about 38 or 39 inches in length, and it topped out at about 75 pounds of draw. Uh, try something a little bit closer to like 34 inches. Um, this will make it a, um, a bit more compact, and uh, it will also increase the poundage. So you're going to need your heat gun, your heat source of some kind, you're going to need a uh, heat trough or something if you're going to be using a heat gun because unlike an oven which, which heats, um, keeps the heat in one area, the heat gun's just going to be heating from one side so when we put this in here it spreads the heat out a little bit more, makes it heat up faster um, and also we're going to need a flattening jig. Now basically this is just a uh, little jig made out of some wood that we can, after we heat up the PVC real limp. We're going to stick it in, we're going to step on it real hard, and it's going to flatten both of the limbs to the same um, angle of flatness. Now, assuming you don't have a uh, flattening jig or a heating trough, I have a video, I'll post the uh, link in the description box, and I go over how to make um, each one of these and how you can customize them for your own use. Um, these marks on either side are basically where I want the bend in the limbs to start, the, uh, the taper. And so I don't want to go right to the middle because it'd make it a little bit awkward. Um, I want to give just a little bit offset. Really glad I'm doing this on a, a 90 degree July day. Let's try that. Right, I'm gonna take this thing, place it right up here, kind of close to the edge here. Um, and then take the flat part and then go just a little bit past where our mark was. This is the part where you 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 work on your uh, your your it, leg day, you know. The arm it's not quite done, but it's a good thing I stepped off because it uh, definitely is bending in a way that I don't want. I'm try and correct that as much as I can. Things we're gonna try and uh, give the bow just a little bit of bend backward, um, and we're also gonna try and pinch this portion in the very middle. And I'm just gonna have to do most of the the handling with my my handles, you know. I'm gonna call that good. Two things. I'm trying to crush this a little bit. I'm letting a kind of gravity sort out how much it bends. Now, one thing you want to avoid is is really sharp corners. So I'm trying not to do that because um, you, you it'll make it brittle again. You know, it's all it's all about that brittle. And I'm not talking about the kind that's got peanuts in it, okay? Now the uh, next thing that you want to do is you want to take a piece of craft foam here and just uh, throw it to the side because we're not a bunch of sissies here. Cut a little piece of wood that's about, what is it, five and a half wide, I guess this is a six by one, and we're going to make it about four and a half inches long. And uh, I'm not going to tell you why we're doing it, you're just going to have to trust me. Why don't you ever listen to me anymore? <laughs> Sneezed. Now that we're starting off with a 36 inch piece of this 2x6 board right here, um, and that may seem a little bit long, but I want to have a little bit of wiggle room because I'm not sure what the final design is going to be. Uh, so let's go ahead and cut that. 
going to do is I'm going to kind of grab it and shoulder it where I think it'd be comfortable to hold. And then I'm just going to make some marks with my uh, my marker here. So I kind of want to, you know, a grip that goes somewhere around there. Okay. And this, you could also do this with a 2x4 score and seven years ago our forefathers, but then you'd have to recite the entire thing and it'd be a lot smaller. And overall, I just think the founding fathers would really appreciate this method. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have room for that thumb or that uh, pinky thing, so I'm just going to go ahead and take, take it off. Nice, smooth curve right there. I want to have plenty of room for my thumb. It'll be kind of our, our general shape here. Not general sews. That's, that's chicken. I'm going to make a couple of marks at three quarters here. And I'm going to cut this out with my circular saw before I do any of the shaping of the body because if I mess this up where I can't get it straight or I have my saw jump or something, it's going to be way easier to just cut another piece, try again, or flip it over and do it um, rather than going through the trouble of cutting all that out and then really realize I've messed up the actual functional bit. fun part where I get dust on every part of my body. Not quite the right size, but I'm wondering if I could maybe just take the spring off of it. Boom. Got the spring from the uh, big one put onto the small one here. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> All that for nothing, huh? Oh, I didn't plug it in. Let me try that. <laughs> Let me try that first. <laughs> hey! And I've cut a couple of grooves here. You can see a little bit in the top and in the bottom. And I'm actually going to wrap a uh, piece of paracord around. And this will hopefully you know, take up enough, enough space. And this basically gives it just a little bit of um, extra diameter, but it also gives it a, something that kind of adds a little bit of friction, a little bit of uh, grippiness to it, so that when you cinch down these screws on the top plate here, it actually holds the bow in, you know, relatively well. For my bowstring, I'm just going to use a piece of paracord. Um, it really is pretty stretch resistant. It's extremely cheap, very strong. So you take your piece of string, you put it into a loop, and then you take that whole loop and trying to do it in a way that has the least amount of wraps, you know, so you want to kind of keep it kind of straight while you're doing it, and then you just literally tuck it into itself like this. I mean, it's an extremely simple knot. So you can see that when you pull it all tight and you cinch it together, it's a very clean little knot. Next thing we need to do is make the trigger mechanism. Now you're probably thinking it's going to be some really complex, difficult thing, and you are 100% correct. In fact, this is it. Just drill a hole right here that's uh, roughly the same size as this, and it's going to sit in there uh, right towards the front of this where the string gets captured on here, and when it's time to fire, you actually just push the string up, and then it goes. So, pretty easy. Let's go ahead and drill a couple holes. So 
So we've got our little hole and we've got our little dowel and they can just go wheel, wheel, wheel right in there. Um, so I'm going to take this little, this, <laughs> everything's little right now. This little screw, this little drill. <laughs> Clippy. So now, um, if any, you know, tiny vampires um, come to us, we probably won't be safe because I don't think this is low enough or big enough to be a crucifix. crucifix. And it kind of more looks like a teeny tiny um, like power line, you know, so that's cool. So here's what I came up with. Of course it is rubber powered. Seriously though, it's got a couple of rubber bands that are acting as the <laughs> spring. I think I'm going to go ahead and put that... Uh, that one more reinforcing board right here in the front, so that, and then we can do a test fire, and then we can make it look real pretty. Um, Got to make sure that this whole section right here is really nice and smooth, otherwise it's just going to rip up my bowstring like crazy. Oh, this is like 50 sheets together. That's cool. You know, whatever. It's like magic. It is so important to do this because it's just your string is just not going to last, you know. Um, so you could use candle wax or cooking wax or bow, you know, wax. That would be a, kind of a ludicrous idea, though. Um, or you could use a crayon, you know, if you're in kindergarten and you've made a crossbow. Um, probably don't show your teachers. I've made that mistake several times. You know, you could also uh, probably use, like, an apple, you know, because I hear they put wax on those these days. Um, you could use a bar of soap but you probably don't even have soap because you're a filthy uh, animal. Uh, so yeah. I realized I was missing my arrow uh, holder, so I just mocked this one up really quick. We can uh, refine it more later, but I just, uh, we're working on this all afternoon. <laughs> I wasn't kidding, that's pretty hard. I think that's gotta be close to 100 pounds. Woo! It actually kicked a little bit. Um, it does seem to be working pretty well, and so next time you guys see it, I think it's going to be all uh, sanded and dressed up and looking pretty either for Sunday morning or a Friday evening. It's up to you. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. It was a ton of fun to make. And it's great to have another item to put onto the wall of cool things. Um, some of these things have a uh, video for themselves. Um, and some of them have videos that are in progress or are to be made. Uh, but over time, just going to be awesome to see that filled up. I will t link below, uh, including one where I show you how to make a very cool 35 to 45 pound recurve bow and it shows you how to make the heating trough and the flattening jig that I used in this video. 
guys and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more cool projects like this, including a quick overview of the crossbow that I made in this video and a more in-depth firing video. I'm Ian the Junk Juggernaut and I hope to see you in the next one. Okay.